Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, as uh, Anthony just introduced me, I'm Charlie from My Film and Television. Uh, um, My Film and Television is a small independent production company based uh, actually in Norwich. It got its name from I, a little uh, village in Suffolk. So um, we're program makers, that's really where we started from. Um, and we worked with John Peel back in 2002 um, and became friends with him, um, like millions of other people. <coughs> very sad when he died in 2004. Um, and, had, and had lost touch with his family until Sheila, his wife, got in touch with us last year. And we just started talking about some projects, and they were creating the John Peel Centre for Creative Arts in the uh, Corn Exchange in Stowmarket, local village. Um, and it had John's ethos around it, and so we started talking about things in general. They needed some video content produced, so we produced them as a, a sort of because we wanted to get involved with them. Um, and then we heard about the space, um, and we actually only heard about the space the night before we were actually due to get an application in. Um, and um, we thought, this is a perfect opportunity to look at John Peel's record collection. We'd already had a conversation with, with Sheila about it. And in the past, several people had looked at the record collection, thought about the record collection, said, surely this is something that should go online. And then everyone had gone, music, clearance. Oh my god, it's just a nightmare. So um, we actually just went completely the opposite way and said, actually, forget music clearance altogether. What's in John Peel's record collection? Don't people actually really want to know what's in the collection itself? So let's forget, just part music clearance for the moment, and then let's see if we can do something with the record collection, make it available for people to do. And the space, and there was 26 weeks, and there's 26 letters of the alphabet. So we've, we've created a site. This is the site itself on the space. Um, and actually, the first thing I'm going to do is going to ask Sheila to introduce it to us. So if you could play the film, please. John's record collection is one of the most important record collections in the world and the space project is actually allowing people to just have a small insight into what's there. The best of them, uh, the ones that I regarded as being the best, like the Big Heart Records or those by Little Feet and bands like that, still sound terrific, or Rai Kuda's records still sound good. Then other things which I used to play, I just think, that is awful. Most of them now, the funny thing is that if you listen to Radio 2 at all, a lot of them cropping up on there late at night, you know, most weird. Obviously, he's collected records all his life. I got involved when I first met him in 68. I know there's over 26,000 albums. No idea how many singles there are or CDs. We started cataloguing them, putting them onto file cards in about, I would think, 69. They're bog standard little file cards, and John hand typed them on his old Olivetti typewriter. So they're all little file cards, that, and they are done alphabetically but the albums are stored numerically, so they, they cross-reference. Each week, we're choosing the first hundred of each letter of the alphabet and giving some information what's there, what John particularly starred, what were his favourite tracks. And also within each letter, there'll be one artist that we will choose uh, that we will particularly feature. And hopefully, people are going to really enjoy having a little bit of John's collection. Okay, so when we, um, we, we pitched the initial idea, we, we pitched it with the idea that there would be like an online museum and you'd actually come into the studio where he did actually produce a, a lot of his programs, particularly on Thursday nights on BBC Radio 1. And, um, and this is it. This is actually the room as it is today um, with a few bits that we've added into it. So the film reel, if you look at the film reel here, if you click on that, you'll be able to go through to uh, the different video content that we've actually produced. So for every week, and we're... K, the letter K goes live tomorrow, so you can have a look at letter K. Um, we produce a um, sort of five to seven minute film about a, an artist that's actually been chosen by the family. And it's not necessarily the most obvious artist that's going to choose, so they choose lots of different um, 
types and people, and then we've, we've had to track them down. So we're making 26 short films, and so each of these films have the usual clearance issues around, around them. Um, then, oh, we've gone through to the record collection. Hang on a second, let me just go back to the, um, the site itself. Within here, right, Peel Sessions. So this is one of the issues, music, clearance. What are we going to do about clearance? We've said, oh, we don't need to worry about clearance. Then we've got a site with John Peel on. You've got to have some music on it. So what we did is we linked it through using Spotify. Um, and actually, Spotify um, have over 200 John Peel sessions that actually are on there at the moment. I mean, there are over 2,000, so there's a, there's a few not on there at the moment. But um, it was a way to actually make sure that people who really wanted to listen to it um, did get a chance to do so. I'll, I'll come to back about Spotify because it has its um, own issues. Um, so then we go through to, um, uh, you've got here radio um, shows, and you've got... Um, uh, a blog down there, and you've got the record collection, and you've got some photographs as well. Um, I'll quickly touch on the radio shows, because this is one of the things, this is a good example of actually the space for people, I, I presume everyone probably does know in here, but it's a, it's a sort of project between the Arts Council and the BBC. Um, and we've had a BBC mentor helping us, who's been fantastic, and he's done everything he possibly can, and I keep phoning him up saying, we need this, we need this, we need this. Um, with John Peel, there's obviously a lot of stuff where the BBC actually has. Um, and the one thing that I suppose... I'm a little bit disappointed with, is actually under the radio shows, we've got very little content. Um, my plan, which is that, was that we would have a different radio show for every day that the space was live. Um, and that is, exists already actually online um, in the John Peel Wiki site. But it turned out that John Peel's radio shows are all owned by BBC Worldwide, and that just got a no-no. So that was just too difficult to actually clear. So um, we... We then come through to the actual record collection itself. And this is one of the things that we really wanted to make sure was as tactile as possible, make it feel a bit more like John and people didn't get just a list of the, uh, the albums and stuff. So if we look under H, for example, the featured artist of the week sort of slides out of there, you click on it. And we actually, um, within here, this collection or the, these records there, if I actually just close this down, um, these are the the physical 100 records in his collection, which have been gone through the house, pulled them out physically, put them on a shelf, photographed them, then actually gone through so that you can click through the spine, do this on it, which actually was quite a lot of work that was actually done in order to be able to do so. And then if you click on each one, they open up. Now, these cards are the ones that he did. They're all scanned. You can see whatever marks and stuff that are on there. Um, and it links through. If you play it, listen to some swing doors there. Um, and this was... As we wanted to make sure that we did get it as, as much as possible about John with his family's input um, and that it did feel like more like a museum rather than just a list. We did actually get some initial feedback, sort of like how a four-year-old child could have made this. I dispute that. Um, and uh, that uh, actually that why have we got to fiddle around with this and sort of like, why can't we just have a list of what's in there? It's like, well, you've missed the point. And really the point here is that you've got to be able to... to um, to physically go through the collection. I mean, when I say go through the collection, we will have only reached 20, uh, a tenth of the collection by the 31st of October this year. I mean, the first 100 in the Fs, for example, gets you to Faith No More, so you're FAI. Um, so it, it really is. There's, there's over 26,000 LPs. There's over 40,000 singles which have not yet been touched or even looked at. The CDs are not uh, are sort of not even there. So we, this was a real pilot sort of um, project that we wanted to, to um, show and see how much audience interaction there was and how much interest there was. And we've had a huge amount of interest, which has been fantastic. Um, so, so we looked at music rights, and the, the obvious um, thing was to go with Spotify. Now, Spotify has its lovers and haters, um, and we've had a certain number of people who sort of said, oh, I can't get Spotify. Spotify doesn't work in every country of the world. We've had a big uptake in America, actually, quite a lot around Europe as well, Australia. So there's been, it's been quite international in its interest, and in countries where Spotify doesn't work, that does mean that there's, a, there's an issue about being able to get the rights there. Um, and there have been a few people who says, I don't want to give out my details and I'm not going to run up to Spotify, but we couldn't do anything about that. We said our, our ambition is to make this available, and we want it to be available. And in, in some cases where we've had a featured art, artist, the actual the very first in the A's was a guy called Mike Absalon, um, who probably people have never heard of, but he happened to be 0001 in John's collection. So we tracked him down. He he'd lived in Canada. He was over in Ireland. We brought him over from Ireland. And the record that he actually had, and that was 0001, which is Save the Last Gherkin for me, um, had, uh, wasn't available anywhere. So he actually gave it 
us that, we put it onto SoundCloud, and so that's now on SoundCloud, so people can actually access that. So we're looking at ways that we can actually make music more available, but there is no doubt music rights clearance is really, really difficult, and it's one of those things that we cheated. We just actually went, okay, let's, let's get it up there, get an interest, and then we've got an ability to be able to go to some of the music publishing houses and say, right, want to clear these rights. We couldn't digitize 100 albums a week. We just don't have the manpower. We just, it's just not, although I think what we're doing is, is an awful lot. It's a pretty small team of about sort of four to six of us actually doing a lot of the work that's actually going on at the moment. So um, what problems do we have? Um, well, I've talked about the radio, and I'd like to have got more radio stuff, and that's an ongoing conversation um, at the moment. Um, we did do a project which was, it turned out that in this, it was spotted that on May the 23rd was the 40th anniversary of the Ziggy Stardust Peel session. Um, and they we were commissioned to do a, a small extra film about it. Um, and we did that. We didn't get to David Bowie, um, but we did get to Trevor Boulder, who's a bass guitarist, um, and did a really nice piece. And we got the, the recording from the Peel session and everything else, and we did it. And then there was a bit of a panic. It was like, well, is this OK? Who actually has the rights? And no one actually knew who the, had the rights to the John Peel session, which you'd expect the BBC to have. And we went to the BBC. The BBC weren't sure. We went to EMI Records. The EMI Records weren't sure. So we went PPL. We, they couldn't clear it and make it available. Sorry, we can't do that. And eventually, at about an hour before we were due to go live with it, the BBC said, yes, it's OK. Um, so it's, it is difficult with sort of like clearing that stuff. And, you, and, and the trouble was, I think, a lot of the stuff with the Peel sessions is the artists were so keen. I mean, going back to questions asked earlier on, the artists are so keen for actually for their music to be played and available that they sign contracts which they don't necessarily have the permission to do so. And that was the worry. It wasn't the BBC just being overprotective. It was genuinely and being who the artist was. So, so that was uh, um, one of the things that we had to deal with. Um, if I just go back to sort of um, one of the other issues that, that's come up. So if we just click on one of these. OK. Um, as well as the, um, uh, oh, we haven't even talked about paint between the sleeves, we actually, there's a lot of material that actually John kept between the sleeves, letters from that artist and everything else, and we're making them available separately on a Flickr um, um, site. But on here, we have the front and back cover of every single record, and they're all being photographed separately. Um, they've been done as part of the process too, so every time we've pulled the 100 out, we've actually photographed the front and back cover as well. Um, this is a rights issue. Um, this is an issue that we don't have the time to actually be able to do it, so we took a um, calculated risk, and it was discussed uh, both with the BBC and with the Arts Council, and this was a decision made with the John Peel Arts Centre, that we produced them at low res, um, so that if people actually wanted to use them, they couldn't blow them up to a massive size, um, and that should anyone complain about the, um, the album artwork being on there, then we would remove them instantly and apologise. And that's, that's the approach that we've actually taken. So I'm sure there's a lot of people in the room horrified by what I've just said. Um, so, don't tell anyone, please. <laughs> so, um, so that's that's uh, the the. I think probably the only practical approach we could take. Otherwise, we weren't going to chance to be able to do that. And if you go to sites like Discogs and everything else like that, they're already on these sites. It doesn't excuse us, and we're doing it on a publicly funded site, so we have to make sure that we're doing it. But we had to work, make a practical workaround, and that's that's one of the things I'd say is you've got to try and work around problems when you've got it, and there's not a lot of time. If you can actually make a workaround then that's probably what I would advise you to do. Um, I probably should shut up now. Yeah, OK, OK, I should shut up now. Um, so uh, there was one thing. One last thing I would just sort of say is coming back to a question that was asked earlier on as well. Um, the John Peel Center for Creative Arts is a voluntary organization. It it's, doesn't really have any members of staff. So we've started working, then we work with John's family. It was a, a really good collaborative affair. And what I would recommend any arts organization, obviously, because we're a production partner, is to find a production partner to actually produce stuff with so that you're not having to go through some of the headaches because <laughs> rights issues are something that we deal with frequently. That's it. I'll shut up now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Come on, let's see. Um, so um, we'll come back to the, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to politely phrase it as ask forgiveness, not permission approach to, um, mm -hmm. to, to album covers. Um, did you cheat or were you just smart about how you did use Spotify and music services? Well, it, it seemed, when, we, when the space was first put up, it was a big thing. Oh, this is linked with BBC. BBC has a blank agreement. We're fine. Right. Then there was like, oh, okay, no, maybe not. Maybe we should have an online agreement. We can get a PRS license, and that will be fine as well. And then PRS, and we were looking at the cost, and it was mounting, and mounting, mounting. And there were 112,000 unique hits on day one. 
Yeah. So we could have ended up with a reasonable bill at the end of it, and I think there's still we're waiting to see what happens at the end of it. So, so I think the only option was, and we discussed it with the BBC, was who out there already has the rights. And we were surprised by how many albums. We're about 50% actually have a link through to Spotify. Right. So you sort of outsourced the, yeah. the rights collection problem? Yeah, we went to speak to Spotify, and they were thrilled, and then have done nothing about it so far. So we'd, we'd like them to be more of an, a proactive partner.